everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca, if we have never met before, and this is my YouTube channel where we talk about all the houseplant things. Today is going to be a bit of a casual video on purpose, so I'm not using my regular mic setup, so I do apologize if the sound is different. Anyway, I'm very excited because I actually ordered online a greenhouse, a little greenhouse, well not like little, but it is a full standing greenhouse that will fit in my house. I am running out of room in my bathroom for those plants that really need high humidity, love that high humidity, and so I don't want anybody to perish because of that. So I have bought a little greenhouse that I will be putting in my office filming space, and if you know anything about me, if you watch my Sunday videos, I'm always cleaning up this room <laughs> because like really all I ever do in here is work or film videos and so that's either at my desk or literally sitting on the floor right here. So I have a corner over here which I'll be showing you guys in just a second that I think I'm going to put it in but as soon as literally like hours after I bought this greenhouse it's like a plastic and metal greenhouse it was like 30 bucks I'll link it down below if I end up liking it and after I bought it I realized that I could have purchased like a beautiful glass credenza case thing off of Ikea and I still am probably gonna do that because I really like the way that it looks I just want to wait a little bit before I like jump into a decision like that because it is like $200 and I'm thinking that it would be really beautiful sitting behind me Ooh, I'm excited about the thought of it so I feel like I am gonna buy it but I'm just gonna wait a little bit to make sure that like I like a greenhouse thing in my house so anyway, I have in this corner over here just a huge Monstera plant, which I can move to closer to the window or maybe even set up a grow light thing in my living room. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how I can move around my plants so that they're happy and so that I'm happy without hurting their lives and causing issues for them. So definitely that plant is so big, so it's going to pose a problem in this situation, but anyway. Today we're just going to be unboxing the greenhouse, putting it together. Oh yeah, I have to put the thing together. I didn't think that through. <laughs> I hate assembling things, so I hope that it's super easy. We will have to see. Also, I should say that Leo is not here with me right now because he is at the groomer. And I'm really sad to not be with him. I think that I have separation anxiety from my dog. <laughs> The first time we got his haircut, they shaved him and we asked them not to do that. And it wasn't even necessary that time, so that was just a bad experience for us all. Poor Leo was very scarred. So, here's the shelves. And that looks pretty nice. I mean, everything's like metal. I wanted something that was black because I just, I, I wanted to avoid this looking tacky most of all because I feel like I don't want something like big and plastic in my house and then I just made the plunge and bought it. So it is probably something that eventually will live outside hidden away eventually when we have a bigger house. But for now I guess just for like utilities sake it will be nice to have something like this so that I'm not stressed out about my new plants that are coming in and also my current plants. So we've got instructions, and this should be easy, I think. Okay, so it appears that it is green, even though I think I ordered a black one, but it's not even worth returning and trying over because it's gonna look tacky no matter what. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going to assemble this thing and catch up with you when that's done because I think that this is gonna take a while and we don't need to watch me struggle, you know? That might be just very painful for all of us to watch. <laughs> Alrighty, she is assembled and in place where she's going to live. So this whole area is, oh, it's genuinely so messy. This room is always messy. So this top shelf is optional to have it on top or at the very bottom, and I have opted to have it at the top just so I can put seedlings on it, because I am going to be starting seeds. So that will be a future video to come. So what I think I'm going to do is just like secure these down 
probably using my plant velcro tape <laughs> honestly probably just like one in the middle just so that it's not like bouncing because that's gonna bother me you can definitely tell that it was 30 bucks but it's really not that bad and it will do the trick i hope Fingers crossed, I will definitely keep you guys updated. And I just got notified that Leo is all done with his haircut, so I'm going to go pick him up, and then I'm going to come back and dress up this thing, put plants on it, do the whole thing. So definitely we'll be checking back in with you when that is finished. And I just realized that this bottom section down here could be used for more plant storage because I don't have many places to put stuff for my plants. So since this is here now, I need to find a different place to store my fabric for sewing. <sighs> Once you think you found a solution for something, there's a problem with something else, you know what I mean? That is just how things go when you live in a very tiny apartment and have hobbies that take up a lot of space. <laughs> so that is what I'm going to be doing right now. I'm gonna go get Leo and I will catch up with you guys when I'm back. How does it feel to be home? Look! <laughs> okay, so his hair is super short, which we expected, but anyway, so that's it. Ew, Leo, put the rocket away! So now what I need to do is put on the cover, and I swear when I bought it, I asked for the one with the black bias tape, that's what this stuff is, but I guess there was some sort of mishap, and whatever, I already have it, I'm not going to return it for the different color. Well, that smells like plastic. All right, so there it is with its little cover. I am excited by how easy that was to put together and assemble. This plastic covering is an eyesore. The whole thing really is an eyesore, but hopefully I won't be living here forever and this can live outside or just in a room that I don't go in that often eventually. That's the deal on this greenhouse. I will have it linked down below if you guys might be interested in seeing what it's all about. I believe it was like 30 bucks, so honestly not bad. I'm going to put some plants in it now to just see what it looks like fully dressed out. All right, so that was a little bit anticlimactic, but what I'm realizing is that this is just a little bit too short for a lot of my plants, but Rest assured, I will be getting some plants that will be better suited for this greenhouse and I will be putting them in here and sharing along what that looks like in that whole process. Okay, so it has been a few weeks since I last filmed for this video, so I wanted to just show you a quick little update on this greenhouse. Since the last time I filmed, I have added quite a few plants in here. And I just wanted to show you, I guess, their progress and how this greenhouse is working out because now I have a bit more of an idea of how it has actually been. So let's get into that. So something that is immediately annoying about it that I've noticed is the fact that it zips from the bottom. <laughs> and it's such a silly thing to be irritated about but it does just make it kind of difficult to get in here just for something random. If I need to like check on something, I have to like completely unzip it and then stick my hand in, but that is if I'm being like extra critical. Um, so in this greenhouse, it actually feels pretty warm. So I have this meter in here at all times so that I know what's going on. And so basically it gets, it gets as low as 57 degrees and as high as 82 degrees and currently 72. So usually when I look, it's around 60 to 70 degrees in here. The grow lights, I think, make it pretty warm in here. And then as far as humidity goes, we can see that it is currently 89% humidity. That is usually what it sits at. I've never seen it at 32% humidity as it is showing here. Um, it did take a few days to like build up humidity, but ever since then it has been like around 80, 85 to 90% humidity in here. So what I have put in here 
I have some stray leaves that I took off a plant and just lazily threw down. Peperomia prostrata. And I haven't noticed, honestly, like anything particularly new, but they do really like humid environments, so I hope that this is good enough for it. We will definitely see. This flower has gotten a lot bigger, so it is responding in some way, so we will see kind of what happens with this. I'm not expecting a ton. This plant is one that has done the most. So this is a Gloriosum, and it's a very small variety of Gloriosum, obviously. It's just a baby. But we already have a new leaf here. I think that is a new leaf and a new leaf here. And since the last time that I checked on this, like two days ago, these have already gotten so much bigger. Like this was not there at all two days ago, this like green squiggly thing, which I'm not entirely sure what that is. But in any case, this plant is super, super happy in here. It's really responding. And it had been living outside of a greenhouse, obviously, for its whole time with me, and it wasn't doing anything until I put it in here. So that's really exciting. This is a Pilea peperomioides, which is honestly just like been through the ringer. You can see it has a story to tell, but I put it in here just to see what would happen and it's doing okay. You saw some dead leaves down here that I pulled off and I don't know, I kind of just have it in here to see what will happen. It's definitely a rehab plant. And then this plant here, I really, hold on, let me maneuver this around. This plant here, I genuinely was not expecting to do anything. It had a branch right here. Oh, whoa. Dang, this one is doing a lot more than I thought. So that is a growth point right there, and there's also a growth point right here, as you can see. And when I put this in here, I was genuinely not expecting anything to come of it because I did cut off some new growth that was coming off of um, this right here because it was just like really long and scraggly, and so I wanted to kind of like, I don't know, propagate it and do something else with it. And this is just what was left of the plant, and especially with this leaf looking like this, I was not expecting anything, yet we have something coming up right here and also over here. The next thing I have in here is an Anthurium Ace of Spades, and you haven't seen this plant since I unboxed it from Green Spaces, and honestly, it hasn't been doing anything crazy. This is the one remaining leaf. It used to have, I think, three leaves on it, and now it has one. This was always the most stable leaf out of all of them. Anthurium growth is very strange and confusing to me, but I believe that this thing right here in the middle is going to be a new leaf eventually if it acts like other anthurium that I have. So I don't know, I'm excited, but that, that stump thing, right here was not there when I put it in here initially. So I'm hoping for something here. This variety, like this smaller Ace of Spades is not super impressive, but I do know that as this plant gets older, it gets super impressive. So I'm excited to see what happens with that. And then this is my ugh, Raphidophora decursiva. And you can see that it has just one skinny little root. So this plant actually got root rot when it was sitting in spag. And it's probably, <laughs> it was a me thing. I don't think that I gave it enough circulation when it was in spag. But for some reason it is still like kind of alive. And I'm really sad because it was making a turnaround and then it got root rot and <sighs> we have this tiny root still hanging on but really nothing to show for it. So I don't know what's going to happen with that plant. I'm just kind of holding on maybe for an experiment. And this greenhouse kind of makes me feel less terrible about stuff like that because I can just put plants in here and let them heal. So, okay, we come down here. I have a begonia maculata. And this is two days after I brought it back from a plant swap. It is in LECA. I don't have any plants in LECA besides this one. So I probably will be um, putting it back in soil. But since I got it in LECA, I decided I would just like leave it so that it could acclimate for a little bit to my home. And yeah, it's, I don't know. The person I got it from said that it would perk up really quickly, or sorry, not quickly, but that it would perk up eventually. So I just have it here. And then this is my Philodendron Pink Princess. This new leaf popped out very, very, very fast in this greenhouse. Um, I was not expecting that at all. Like I think that it, came out and then was finished unfurling within like 
three or four days and that does not happen as quickly as it did in here so that's also really exciting um, this plant is basically completely reverted besides like a few pieces that have a pink splash on them and I am going to be using it for an experiment, but I just wanted to let it get a little bit more established in my home before I messed around with it. And down here, I have plants from my most recent import. And as you can see, you can already see like structural issues with the greenhouse. Over there, it is just barely hanging on. I don't even think that that's in a hole anymore. That is one of the things that I have noticed about this. It is just not structurally sound. There is like like little to no structural integrity with this greenhouse. And I've been trying to figure out ways to make it more secure for my plants because I really do like the results that I'm seeing, but I don't trust it, you know what I mean? So I think that I might remove all of the plants from it and put like glue inside of the holes that the poles go into so that it's super sound. But the thing is with that, I will never be able to break it down. So if I wanted to sell it, if I move, or if I wanted to bring it with me, if I move, it's going to have to move as like one structure, which is really inconvenient. So that is the one thing that I would say about this that is the drawback so far is it's just like not sturdy at all. And I don't really trust it. So back there is another Pilea peperomioides and that one is just living its best life. It's doing so much better now that it is in here. It was not looking good, to be honest with you, and it has really had a turnaround. Um, I have a Monstera Peru right over here, and then I have some watermelon peperomia cuttings. Then I have my pink Syngonium, and then another pink princess, which is basically reverted, and then a Syngonium army, which is basically like the modeled Syngonium. And also down here, I have a Calathea Musaica, and it's pretty far away from the grow light, um, these don't need a ton of light, so I have it like two shelves down from it, just sitting at the bottom here with my cocoa mat and my cells for seed starting. So that's what's going on down here. Nothing super crazy. Um, it seems happy. That would be what I have in it so far. Something that I don't think that I mentioned, I stitched on a cocoa mat and this is so good. It has made this shelf super, super sturdy. Like this is the shelf that I trust the most. All of these other shelves, I don't know about them. And with the grow lights, I just tied them on with some rope. Nothing super crazy at all, and it's fed down into the side, and it's plugged in over there. Over there. So that would be the official word on the greenhouse and how it is doing so far. I would say that it has worked out really, really well for me. I am just a little concerned about the structural problems that it has shown me many times some plants have actually fallen over and thankfully no one was like actually injured from it but I wouldn't want to put like super super special plants in here just knowing that they could fall at any moment so that is my current problem with it but other than that it has done super well and I guess I would recommend this if you are willing to just make sure that it is like super super structurally sound. I did talk about how ugly this thing was in earlier clips in the video and like that opinion of mine has not changed but now that I'm seeing the results of it, it feels worth it. I do want something beautiful in my home and I probably will still be getting the Ikea greenhouse that I mentioned earlier. This is good for the spare room. I wouldn't have it on display for like everybody who comes into my home to see because it is pretty ugly to be honest with you. In my opinion, I wouldn't want it to be out but then again like I am pretty picky about my decor and I have a vibe so that would be what I think about that as of now. It's ugly, but it feels worth it. You know what I mean? Definitely let me know if you want to see another update. Maybe I could do like a progressional video again, like film again in a few weeks and then a few weeks after that and just kind of mash it all into one video so that we can see the progress happening in here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are not already, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. I do do a lot of product reviews and recommendations, so you can go ahead and check out that playlist. I will have it linked down below and in the card and what else do I have to say? Oh, this greenhouse is linked in my Amazon storefront, which is always linked in the description box of my videos. And also on my website, I have an entire page of all my planty essentials, which is basically my Amazon storefront, except it's on my website. And on the website is basically a review and an explanation of what I use each product for and how it has improved my life as a plant owner. 
So it's a really great resource and I had a lot of fun putting it together. So if you are interested in more product reviews and you want help in looking for things to buy for your plants to make your life a little bit easier, I would really suggest checking that out. You don't have to buy these things from Amazon. Actually, if you can find them in a local nursery or store, I would suggest you do that first. But I know that that isn't always an option for people, so I like to have it available to see the product and you know have a source where you could buy it from online. All right, um, I'm gonna stop talking because I've been talking for a long time and I'm gonna let you guys go. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.